hey guys welcome back to my channel so sorry about the lighting actually but this lighting helped this time why does it never help like that light is very much across the room from me and clearly it's better um anyway so i am filming this on the 11th but this is my may reading wrap up i came this close to saying june then because of the fact that i because of the fact that it's the 11th anyway so i read five books in the month of may which actually is pretty good for me granted i think i read five books in march and said i was in a slump but actually i think it was just i'd overread but then again i don't know because i feel like i'm in for a good reading month this month i just i feel it in my bones um I've already filmed my TBR video um, and I'm going to stop talking and I'm just going to get into this video. Um, so, well this wrap up, should I say. Um, so the first book that I finished was The Wake Up Call by Beth O'Leary. I I think I started the, I did this in on March 17th so I think I might have started this as part of my starting a new book every single day for a month challenge. Um, yeah, I finally finished this. I rated it at three and a half stars. I hate this strips coming down. Um, yeah, so this, I enjoyed this better to the no show. Like this got back to a bit more of like what I enjoyed about her previous three books. Yeah, um, it got back more to like the little bit of charm, but also at the same time, it wasn't my favorite. Izzy kind of annoyed me a little bit like we very much knew that right from the start that she right from page two that this was going to be a thing of he's not received something in the right way and we fully understand that later and we get a hint of it a little while before like the not twist but before everything gets revealed yeah so i rated it at three and a half stars my goodreads review stated I enjoyed it and it was easy to read but I also didn't care too much about the characters. I did prefer this to the no show though which basically summarise, uh, summarises everything I have just stated. Um, I would still recommend however if you're looking to get into a Beth O'Leary book I would recommend The Road Trip. I did read this years ago um, and I do want to reread it but I still think it would hold up well in my mind. Like, I still think about that book, like, the overall plot of it, every once in a while. Um, so it's one that's stuck with me, and it's why I keep continuing to give her a go. She has a new book coming out, I think it's this year. Actually, when does that book come out? Because I feel like it would be recently if it's coming out. Turns out I was mistaken, because her next book doesn't come out until next April. I think her first three books definitely were better so that's the switch the road trip and the flat share i read the flat share before it got adapted as time goes on it's kind of losing the touch anyway let's get back to goodreads because we've been speaking for too long the next book i read was reckless by lc silver so this is book four um of the chestnut spring series i rated this 4.75 but also at the same time, I would put it on kind of like the same level as Heartless. Um, I really enjoyed this. This, I just, I really enjoyed this. I loved all the cute moments between Theo and Winter. I knew immediately that he hadn't, like he wasn't the one responding. And you'll understand what I mean. Like that was very obvious. And I just love how everything kind of goes on um and also how winter repairs kind of her relationship as you will um and kind of all the, like cute moments between the couple and as they navigate their whole situation um yeah so i really enjoyed this i have actually since started the fifth book not too far into it just been a bit busy but yeah i really enjoy this would highly recommend this series and i enjoyed so the spice scenes for me in book two they were kind of a little bit 
slightly cringy a little bit and one of them was inappropriate I did say that during my wrap up that featured that book I think it was my February one um so if you want to you can go back and check that out um but yeah I thought these just I enjoyed these a lot more I'm yeah clearly I like a single like I enjoy having a kid in the in the book um and that's not a secret like that's not a spoiler because it kind of says so on the blurb I'm so loving it but I'm not too far into hopeless yet then I <laughs> I finally finished listening to the audiobook of an offer from a gentleman basically went through a period where I because I was listening to it through Libby um kind of listened to a big chunk then it got returned because other people wanted to read um tried it out with the um physical book got through a tiny bit more tiny tiny bit more that one sent back because i just didn't really pick it up and then finally got the audiobook again and forced myself to finish it um so i rated this three stars that so this is off an offer from a gentleman is book three I do now own book four. Do I have it here? No. Book four is obviously Penelope and Colin's story. I do want to read that before I watch season three of Bridgerton. I do need to watch season two. I've seen the very odd episode. Like if I've been at my friend's house and they've watched it, then I've seen it. But I haven't properly sat down and watched it. So I do want to. This is Benedict's story. So I think this will be the next season of Bridgerton just based off of timeline I know that there's a small scene in the like at the start and then it jumps two years um and so timeline wise it does actually make sense for Benedict to not be now if they had done it in book order they'd have kind of had to revisit some stuff where we'd be in the know of like and honestly it's just I think how they've done it does actually work better I know that there was some criticism about it but actually chronologically in books it makes sense yeah so I didn't really enjoy this well I did but I didn't um and people who have read the book will understand what I mean but it was just I think because I had already seen Benedict's character in season one years ago it then irked me with him now and just I think just the whole mistress thing like the act when that got bit got removed and the whole issue between classes got removed which I know is a big thing for a historical romance but I just think when you remove that the moments between the couple were cute and like if you put that into a modern day like book and added those bits in and has as a love story it would be really sweet and we'd all love it but when you add in the complexities that relate to the historical elements yeah however i do like how violet played a part in the ending not my favorite i did so i listened to book two by audio book book one was reading book two loved listening to the audiobook I might try and get book four audiobook version and do and at least listen to parts of it so like I can understand like how I can't remember her name how the audiobook narrator narrates those scenes do you understand what I mean I mean like the tones of voice she uses for like interactions I think that would be kind of interesting to see then I read The Bay by L. J. Ross. So, I bought this from Asda, not Asda. I bought this from Sainsbury's, um, partly because of how big this text is. Like, if I, I think I showed you this in a video or a vlog or something like that. I still need to try and edit those because I maybe just isn't wanting to work with me. But look at how big that text is. Um, that was only page one. Don't worry, I haven't spoiled anything big text although so although it's 360 page 361 pages it was kind of like in some ways it's more of like a novella um but I did enjoy this I rated it three and a half stars it was quick and easy read nothing special but ent entertaining none the less 
um, and that's what my Goodreads review was, quite literally. So I would recommend, but also maybe try and pick up like the Kindle version, I don't know. It's big for what it is. Um, but I picked it up because I wanted something that I was going to get through really quickly. Um, yeah, I literally just wanted something that was going to be quick, easy, simple. Um, and it did the job, quite literally. Then I read, and the final book is Things We Never Got Over by Lucy Score. So this month was a unwrapped book. So this is the only book from that TBR video that actually got read. Did I start any of the others? I can't remember all of the others, but no, I don't think I did. No, I didn't. Um, so yeah, I basically started this because of the fact that I hadn't read any of my TBR books. So I rated this four stars. Um, I enjoyed it, but also it wasn't anything special. Like I did enjoy like the elements of it. Um, and I do think it was really nice and I think I will I think I'll enjoy the other books more but I did still enjoy it and I thought it was like a cute romance like obviously there was some like elements for that where it took them a while to actually get to the point of being in a relationship but honestly it's kind of understandable do I remember too much about this book no one of the main criticisms is the whole dog child name situation i didn't have any issue deciphering between the two um but i can understand why and bit of a weird name to name a child in a book i can however i can understand what um lucy was going for when she named her that it was like a lower end four star like i said i might enjoy the second book more and i do know who the couple is in that book like i've looked at the blurb um but i hope you guys enjoyed this video let me know what books you read in the month of may um or what books you're wanting to read in june or if you've got any books that you think i might enjoy based off of what you've seen me like read and rate um and i will see you guys in my next video bye guys